Starting your day off with a take on Vegas you won't get anywhere else. Hi, I'm Holly Madison, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Hi, this is William Shatner, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Why? Because I'm a good American. So is he. And if you don't listen to him, you need to pack up and leave this country. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. Welcome all again! What's up, everybody? It is the Vegas Take on a Monday. Glad you could join us, Sharp and Shapiro. Back at you. A lot to get to. A lot to go over. And we're going to have a lot of fun today. It is Monday, so that means Chris Wynn joining us in studio. And by the way, a reminder. If you haven't already heard, this show moving 9 a.m. to noon starting Monday, August 12th. So we are very excited about that. Also excited about some of our guests today. WNBA All-Star Weekend. It was a lot of fun. We'll get to that. And the commissioner of the WNBA herself, Kathy Engelbert, will be joining us. So that'll be a lot of fun coming up here at the bottom of the hour. Have you ever wondered who's the biggest jerk on the PGA Tour? Who's the biggest degenerate gambler on the PGA Tour? Who's the biggest stiff on the PGA Tour? What's it like getting to know Tiger Woods? Well, we got a guy coming in studio right now that is, uh, I should say, in hour number two that's going to be answering all of those questions. I promise you it's going to be a lot of fun. His name is Darren Willard. He is a longtime PGA Tour caddy, and he is willing to dish the dirt on all the secrets of some of these guys on the PGA Tour. It is quite interesting and we will get to that in hour number two but i want to start with this obviously we could talk about donald trump going after two men of color again right but uh we'll start with something else today and that is i think even a more serious issue than the president going after more people of color we're going to talk about this horrible tragedy that took place yesterday in california you hear about this a 19 year old i'm not going to say his name a 19 year old who has family that lives in Nevada, was able to legally purchase an AK-47, bring it illegally to California, and kill three people and injure over a dozen. This was one of those, I guess you could call it a, a food festival. It was, it was called the Gilroy Garlic Festival. Bring your family out, great food, just have a good time, right? That's what it was supposed to be. A six-year-old and a 12-year-old lost their lives, and a young man in his early 20s. Police don't know why. They don't know what the motive is, but they do know is that this 19-year-old scumbag, like I said, used an AK-47. They don't know the motive, but they do know that on his social media, he was talking about white supremacists. He was talking about certain books that were misogynistic, that were pro-white supremacy. And... Not, not not, really a lot of answers, except we do know that the cops reacted very quickly, although I can tell you if they didn't, a lot more people would have lost their lives. One is too many. But these officers were in a gun battle with this kid, again, with a weapon of war, and these police officers were, wearing, uh, were uh, using handguns, and somehow they were able to become out victorious, which is unbelievable in itself. That's a miracle. And then I hear this morning on the news channels uh, this father talking about when he first heard that he lost his six-year-old son. And how heartbreaking that is. So I ask you gentlemen this question. And by the way, good evening, gentlemen. Chris Wynn, uh, J.D. Sharp in studio. Gentlemen, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well also. Had a great weekend. Opportunity to bounce around town a little bit. And, of course, uh, the WNBA All-Star game. Sure. And we'll get to that. And we'll get to that later. We'll get to that at the bottom. But explain to me this, guys. How is it possible in this country that a 19-year-old can't legally drink can't legally gamble, can't even rent a car, but you can purchase legally an AK-47. How is that possible in this country? How? Well, it, it, it shouldn't be possible. Everything should be uniform as far as I'm concerned. There's no, way, there's no reason that you, that you can't bet sports, but you can buy a, a weapon that can end lives. Mm-hmm. And granted, it wasn't an automatic weapon, but it was. I mean, it's an AK-47. Very close to an AK. Extremely close to an automatic weapon, but it wasn't an automatic weapon. Still, he has no business being able to purchase that and not be able to do the things you just discussed. It should be uniform across the board, and hopefully that rule gets changed very, very soon. I don't think it will. And and if if, if you are 19, fine, keep the rule, but but make sure there's a legitimate, serious mental health screening attached to it. Mm -hmm. Because clearly there was not in this case. Right. And and certainly there were warning signs there, but... Again, we're talking about mental illness. We're talking about not, you should not, in my opinion, you should not be able to purchase a weapon like that. I don't care if you're 19 years old or 99 years old. These types of weapons should not be on the market, period. 
And uh, I don't know if you, you, you recall this name, Gutenberg. Um, he, a uh, great guy who's, a, who's an activist who lost his daughter in the Parkland shootings. He's going to be joining us on Thursday. Uh, I think he's going to be a politician one day and one hell of a politician. So he's going to talk to us a little bit more about this issue of gun control. For Christ's sakes, the guy lost his dad, or I'm sorry, his daughter right. uh, at, in Parkland. So what better person to talk to than that? But, I mean, Chris, what do you make of this? I mean, we talk about these types of shootings. It seems like every week I'm getting tired of it. And usually it is at the hands of of an evil person, obviously, uh, someone who wants to kill innocent people for no reason. But we also need to talk about the weapon that this person was able to. This is a weapon of war made in Russia, period. Well, once again, we're in the territory of here we go again, right? And uh, you say you say you're enraged. I'm sure Americans across the country are enraged when these horrible, horrific tragedies take place. And we keep asking the question, about what Washington, D.C. is going to do, what lawmakers are going to do with respect to uh, whether or not these weapons are sh- should be uh, legally be able to, to be bought. And, it's, it's look, it doesn't matter what the tragedy is. It doesn't matter if hundreds of people get injured and, and you know, over almost 60 people get killed in Las Vegas. It doesn't matter if school children are killed in Newtown, Connecticut, mm-hmm. okay, it seems to me that the status quo ends up in place no matter what. Talk about who, who, who it is that has power in D.C. Look, we all understand it. We can all see what's going on. But is there going to be a breaking point? Is, at some point in, 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 uh, in American society, is there going to be a breaking point where we say enough is enough and actually make common sense, rational gun legislation – Okay, that addresses this issue. You know what's of amazing, these Chris? You talked about the weapon, Brian. Is AK forty seven? There's no need for you know the average Joe on the street to have an AK forty seven or access to it or have it in in your yeah. gun stash in your house. And I'll give out no the, and I'll give out the number if you guys want to join the conversation here. We'll take your calls uh, whether you agree or disagree with us. We want to hear from you. Seven zero two. Two five seven five three nine six. Again, that number to call is two five seven five three nine six. I'm going to tie this into the weekend and and the weekend that I had. Mm -hmm. So you know, I I meet Megan Rapino, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later in the show. But of course, Rapino, you could call her a controversial figure. She wants equal pay for women. She doesn't want to go to the White House. She's not a Trump supporter, so on and so forth. So I post a picture of myself and and Megan Rapino, who was at the WNBA All Star Game. I post it on Facebook, and I have my Republican friends. At least I consider some of them my friends. Yeah. Saying just the so much anger towards this woman, Megan Rapino, right? Calling her vile names, just just horrible things they're saying about her, right? And I'm thinking to myself, where is your anger when it comes to these types of issues? When it comes to innocent Americans dying, you care about Megan Rapino so much, all your anger is, is towards her. I mean, I got it all over Facebook and social media, but here we have what, what where's your anger towards the NRA? Where are you, where's your anger towards politicians that are not doing anything? And I'll put Democrats in there, too. Republicans and Democrats not passing comprehensive gun laws out there and not allowing people to get their hands on these types of weapons. Where is your anger on that? You're going to be angry about a soccer player who said some maybe not nice things about Donald Trump. That's where your anger comes from. We got a six-year-old and a 12-year-old that just died and, and and a gentleman in his early 20s. They're never coming back. They're not coming back. A son, a daughter. A father, you name it, gone, gone, never coming back. And this kid was able to get his hands on an AK-47 type weapon. He came to Nevada where he lived with his family, my understanding, bought the weapon legally, went to California, went on this shooting rampage, and thank God more people weren't killed. Thank God that didn't happen. Where's your anger if you're a Republican on that? Why has Donald Trump not said anything today? Why has Donald Trump not spoken about this? He'll go after Al Sharpton, though. He'll go after Saturday Night Live. You know, he'll go after TV and and what this person said about him, what that. Why isn't he talking about white supremacy and that issue in society? Why isn't he talking about the gun laws out there right now and how we got to get these guns off the market? Why is it that he never brings these issues up? All he wants to talk about is illegal immigration, go after the squad, go after men and women of color. That's all he wants to do. Every day he does it. So don't. How about Cummings, Elijah Cummings? This is a man, a civil rights activist, 
Now, you can say what you want about Baltimore, but to call Elijah Cummings a racist, which is what Donald Trump did over the weekend, is a disgrace. It is an utter disgrace. We'll take your calls, 257-5396. Let's start with Mike. Mike, what's going on? What's up, Mike? Oh, another sad day, huh, gentlemen? It's terrible. It's horrible. I, I just, I, I, you know, Mike, when I saw this father, they interviewed, I don't know if you saw the video, Mike, this father who no. lost his, they, they interviewed this father who lost the six-year-old, and he was talking about the moment he heard that he lost his son. My heart just dropped to the floor. I'm just so, I'm just so hurt and so tired of hearing these stories, Mike, over and over again. Well, I'm telling you, there's nothing you could have done. This guy, they, they were wanding everybody with Garrett wands at the gate. This guy was prepared to go at all costs to get inside. You can't stop a, teen- a psycho teenager. Trust me, I have 14 grandchildren. I'm an expert. No, I, I, Mike, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but you know where my argument is, right? I'm talking about the weapon no, he was using. I know that, but listen to this. I, while you were talking, I wrote this down. This is just off the top of my head. Uh, we have 400 million semi-automatics over that mm-hmm. in America. Yep. We have thousands of laws now that haven't been enforced for 40 years. It makes me sick. It makes me sick, in too. In California, they've done everything they can to stop purchasing weapons. They've bankrupt companies. They've run out sporting businesses They've badmouthed everybody. They're IDing bullets. They're IDing firing. Pins. I think that, but why is that not happening in Nevada, Mike, where he well, legally bought this you, weapon? What about Mandalay Bay? Mandalay Bay, we still haven't got the 700 cell phones back. There's something going on. Yeah. There's a root problem in this country. Yeah. And and I'm telling you, it's so massive. Mm-hmm. Everybody just is in denial. I it's agree. Not the weapon, it's the person. I think uh, an AK-47 is not as bad as a standard 12 gauge with double lock buck loaded to the to the brim, the magazine. I that think there's a way lot more damage. I, I, than and that's AK-47 no, Mike. Listen, and, and I don't necessarily disagree with you, but my problem is nobody's doing anything about mental illness. Well, this nobody's. Is what's going to happen? They're going to put a border check now. On the border of California, and every car going to California is going to be checked for weapons. Good, good. Did you hear that? Yes. Did you hear that? Yes, and that's a good thing. I like that. That's a good thing, and and more needs to be and done, I Mike. I also did hear Trump condemn it today, uh, about two hours ago. Okay, uh, if he did, then... Th- then yes, then, I did. Okay, if he did, then I'm happy he yeah. did, but here's my problem, Mike, and by the way, I appreciate the call. Here's my problem. Okay. By the way, that that thing on the border is going to do wonders for drug yeah. trade. But but here's my problem with what he just... Okay, maybe Trump did make a right. statement, yeah. but he spends more time going after people on Twitter than talking about the important I mean, issues do, that Americans care about. Do you know why he went after Elijah Cummings? Absolutely, I do. Okay. I absolutely Baltimore do. Baltimore is an absolute cesspool, and it has been for the better part of, t- of 20 years. Does that mean he's a racist, though? Doesn't mean he's racist. But that's what your president I'm not, said. You're not, you're not letting me finish my statement before you're interrupting me. But I'm just saying. That's what Baltimore, he said. inner city Baltimore, is 63% African American. Donald Trump is saying, hey, in this democratic, this, this historically democratic state slash city where, that, where an African American is, is a leader, which Elijah Cummings is, I'm trying to help the situation, and he's being called a racist because Elijah Cummings happens to be African American. What if he was Caucasian? Would you have a problem with that? With what he said about Baltimore? Okay, but that's, I mean, the pictures. I'll answer that. I mean, Bernie Sanders called it a third world country. Was that racist mm-hmm. too? And I agree, Donald. And I know Donald Trump, but it's a legitimate question. Is okay. that racist so as well? He, so he went after two people over the weekend. He went after Cummings and he went after Al Sharpton, two African Americans. He went after the squad, four women of color. He consistently goes after people of color. That's number one. Number two, you're absolutely right that Baltimore is, they're going through a lot of bad problems there. I mean, and, have, have and you, you, but hold on, but hold on. He called Elijah Cummings a racist. Well, it is kind Elijah of. Elijah Cummings is not a racist. That is nonsense. Now, if he yeah. eloquently spoke the point that you just made, and I don't necessarily disagree <laughs> with what you said. Well, I'm not being well, serious. How, I mean, the wire he, traffic, th- those are movies well, predicated on Baltimore and the drug trade there. But here's the point, J.D. Shows, that, I guess. Shows, this shows is, movies. This is the deal, okay? It, Donald Trump never goes after the quote-unquote white congressman from Kentucky or Louisiana. What about Chicago? Who, but, you gotta, let me finish my point, okay? He never goes after any white congressman or congresswoman from, say, 
Louisiana yeah. or Kentucky, where, by the way, the poverty rate and the crime rate are higher in their districts, right, than it is point. Where, where Elijah Cummings is from. Listen. Donald Trump has never done that. Listen, okay? I, I understand. And has never said, oh, you know what, you, you should concentrate more about your district and do that than, right. than, than worry about— Listen. Uh, uh, you know, well, now, now, is, that, is, that, is that racism or is that just uh, politics? You because he, it's 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 absolutely. I mean, he's going to go after every. every he's he's, he's going to go after, after every single major city it's, that's voted Democratic that has high African American population. Listen, right, so, Chicago. So are, are, are you justifying what the president said about Elijah Cummings? Is that what you're trying to do here? Because I'm not. No, I'm, I'm, really I'm saying you, I'm saying it was more of a political move than a racial move. Then why would you call him a racist if it's not a racial move? Is Elijah, Cummings, is Elijah Cummings a racist? It's ridiculous. No. Okay. Ridiculous to call him a racist. Yes. It's not. Uh, I think it was a racial move, and I think he's trying to turn it on Democrats. Let's take some more calls on that. Uh, 257 5396. Let's go to Donnie. Donnie, what's going on? How's it going, guys? Good. What's up, Donnie? Nothing. I mean, I heard you say that you heard that the AK 7, AK 47 is a weapon of war. I was just wondering how you classify <laughs> a weapon of war. Well, you tell me, why was that weapon made? Do you know the definition of an AK-47? Do you know why it was made? I'll answer it for you, Donnie. It was made for mass casualties. That is a weapon of war. A gun that is made not to defend yourself, but to kill as many people as possible. That is exactly what an AK-47 is. And this gun that this 19-year-old buffoon was using was as close to an AK-47 as you can find. He bought it legally in Nevada. And the point I'm trying to make is that gun should not be on the market, period. Well, I mean, I, I'd have to disagree with you because that, that technical gun is not the actual AK-47. It is it's as close to an AK. With. Anyone who knows guns that's not biased would tell you it is as close to an AK-47 as you can find. It is a weapon of war. There's no, I mean, there's no I, argument there with all due respect. Well, hey, listen, and I, I understand what you're saying, and, I, and I, I somewhat get where you're coming from, but it's no different than an AR. An AR is not a weapon of war. As a matter of fact, the AR that we use today is one of the most preferred guns for coyote hunting, which is uh, varmint. Okay, now that's... And, and the same is same you, with the AK-47 that is available to most of the general this, market. The I actual gun, the actual... At any point. I didn't say you did. I didn't say you did. And I appreciate the call, Donnie, but this specific gun was an SKS, and anybody who knows guns will tell you that it was as close to an AK-47 as you could find. I do appreciate the call, and I appreciate your perspective. Let's go to Moses. Moses, what's going on? Yeah, so I got two points here. One is you get rid of the guns, yeah, the number of gun deaths will go down, but it doesn't address the problem of violence. In in societies where they have less guns, they have more stabbing deaths than the U.S. does. Let me ask you a question. If your child was in a school, God forbid, and somebody walked into that school, would you rather have that person have a knife or, or, or a weapon of war? What would you rather have, Moses? God forbid, if you, if, if you had to choose. Uh... Moses. A knife, they probably would be able to, but I mean, knife, you're uh, you're still going to be able to kill people. Moses, and come you, on. But, and you take out the mass shootings. Uh, there have been 247 on, on the of them to, since January. 247. What do you think about that? 247 mass shootings in this country. I think second up to that is like there's like five or six. We are. Well, we, my second point. Well, this leads me to my second point. Is okay. The reason why I think we have so many mass shootings is because the media or the media uh, covers it exhaustive, uh, exhaustively and they give these people uh, publicity. I haven't mentioned his name once in this segment. Well, you haven't, but other people have. I refuse to right, mention his I agree. I refuse to mention his name. I don't entirely disagree with you Moses, but to say that that is the reason why we're leading the country uh, in mass shootings, I think is no, a little bit... what what he's saying is that these people are looking for attention, they're getting it. And if that's and that's why people are doing what they're doing because they want they want attention clearly two five, and they want to kill people two five seven five three nine let's go to Bobby Bobby what's up hey Bobby hey how's it going what's on hey, your mind uh, I got some comments about Trump and also what's going on but okay go ahead I do want to before I start the mayhem I do want to say when the football comes NFL I, I got to show you and uh, JD. Maybe I can text you over some of my uh, two to four thousand dollar tickets uh, 
I'd love to get some of JD's stuff. Anyway, all right, I'll sounds talk good. Later when that happens, fair enough, Bobby. When the sports, uh, hey, hey, hey Bobby, after this call, to talk to Johnny. Worth. Hey, okay, so so I talked to you about three months ago, and you know, I I voted for Trump, and um, every day I just keep hearing this man child just trying to wear me out. I can't keep up with them. <laughs> I love this. It's just, it's, I'm yeah. tired. I mean, it literally wears on me. It, it, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Being a big baby. I know where, I know where you're going with this. <laughs> I, I agree. Kelly on Conway, who has somewhat of a brain, I think, she doesn't tell him or he just don't listen to nobody. She's robotic, but, though. She, she, she's an enabler. That's what I don't like about her. She's an enabler. Yeah. And, I, and I'll tell you what, this is just really short and sweet. These um, gun lovers, which I have, I have guns, okay, but they, I think they hold on to their semi-automatic AK-47s because they think they're going to one day take on the government. Yeah. If, yeah, if the government <laughs> wants to fight the people, yeah, they're done. Good luck to the people, all right. Exactly. Good luck because they got I their agree. freaking infrared microwaves. Yeah. They'll fry your ass. Bobby, I so could wait. not, I, I could not agree with you more. Give they they probably have technology where they could attack you and be invisible and you wouldn't know it. Yeah. Yeah, no, let's keep right. the shotguns and the pistols. Those are no problem. Yeah, no, Bobby, I, I could not agree with you more. i got to get to some other callers real quick, and then we're up against yeah, a hard break. My, my, I appreciate my, my, it. My thoughts on weapons are if if you don't need them to hunt, or if, if you if you use these weapons to hunt animals and it's unfair to the animals, you don't need them. I agree. Because if you're hunting animals with an AK-47, you are cheating. <laughs> That's a joke. Let's, Period. Let's go to uh, Neil. Neil, what's going on? Brian. Yes, sir. Second Amendment. It's about self-defense. So you need a weapon of war to defend yourself? Is that what you're saying? I'm not talking about Neil. So should I, get, should I get eight bazookas in my house? I'm thinking flamethrowers, Panzer tank. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, No, exclude all that stuff. But the right to bear arms, it's about self-defense. I never it's said – when have I ever said in this debate, Neil, that you, you Take should, away everybody's guns. Yeah. When have I said yeah. take away – I said weapons of war, like the one that this – buffoon used this 19 year old not going to say his name that the one you know the type of weapon that he used that's all i'm saying listen those cops were able to defend themselves with handguns so you cannot make the argument that you can't defend yourself with a handgun i want those types of weapons like an ak-47 off the market it's not a difficult arg i mean i don't even know why i'm arguing with people about this our our, our brothers and sisters are dying in these mass shootings. We lost how many people October 1st, a couple years ago? Yeah. And yet there are people that still want, want, want to defend the NRA. I just don't understand your argument, right, Brian, Neil. Don't get yourself worked up. I think everybody's in no, a no, It's already a done deal. What do you mean uh, don't get the myself? The horse is out of the barn, What brother? do you mean don't get myself yeah. worked up? It, a six-year-old is Brian. dead. A 12-year-old is dead. Don't tell me not to get myself worked up. I, tell that to the father. Re- no, tell everybody, that to the father every- who lost a six-year-old. And honestly, Neil, we've had this conversation literally 15 times in the last six months, and it's been about shootings like this one. Yeah, Our stance yeah, no, has not the, changed the rifles, one the iota. Rifles should not be permitted. I mean, you shouldn't be able to buy them on a retail level. So you agree That's with me then. So what are we arguing about, Neil? Well, the reason I called, I called about um, Elijah Cummings. Can I change the subject? Oh, absolutely. I'm excited for quickly, this. Quickly, 30 seconds. Go. All right, quickly. If you're going to label President Trump a racist, I think it's fair to label Elijah Cummings a racist. Really? Has Elijah ever ah, told no. anybody to go back to their country? I don't think that's a racist statement. Okay. Yeah, 100% right. it is. Right. It's 100% you know, racist. All right. It's 100% well, racist. Neil, Neil, okay. Okay, Neil, we disagree. Uh, we'll have more time to talk about this discussion uh, a little later on in the show. Let's go to Brad. Brad, what's going on? Hey, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Love your show. Thank you, Brad. Uh, you know, as far as the uh, Elijah Cummings thing, I have two quick points. But the first one is uh, just to list all the people that Trump has criticized. John McCain's not a war hero. Crazy Bernie. Pocahontas, um, lying Ted Cruz. I, I, how They're long all Caucasian. I, go? I can go for I can go for a half an hour oh, if you I agree. want. But but then you're saying now it's racist. Secondly, with the guns. Well, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll tell Ted Cruz to go back to his point with the guns though, because they only got two seconds. Go ahead. Um, I can take my car down to Las Vegas Boulevard right now. I'm glad the guy ridiculous didn't plow into a crowd. That's down a ridiculous there. argument. That's a ridiculous argument, Brad. Really? Yeah, and here's why. Okay. First of all, when you look at these school shootings and these mass shootings, could you kill a number of people with a car? Sure, you could, but you cannot compare that to carrying an AK-47 and what transpired here in Las Vegas. What even trans- has transpired with 
you know, lower amounts, even what happened yesterday. Could the kid have taken a car and plowed into some people? Yes, it could have happened. But and number, he's only got to be 16. Okay, but to make that, okay. I, you have to be 21 to I, drive a car? I understand, Brad, but to make that argument and say, well, you know, let's just let everyone have weapons of war because, you know, the kid could have just plowed into people in a car is an utterly ridiculous argument, and it is... It, it, to me, you are doing a disservice to all those family members who have lost loved ones by saying, well, he could have just taken a car, so let's just let him buy an AK-47. That is insane. I've got 30 seconds for you, Wilmer. Go, and then i got to take a break. Go ahead. <laughs> a great name. Uh, I, I just feel it's unfair that, you know, the president's being attacked for supposedly being a racist. I don't think he was a racist. Absolutely. No, I, 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 I don't, I don't, was. I don't think so 10 either. reasons why he was. Too. I think he's trying to help a city that's predominantly based on another race and being called a racist for it, which is insane. Wilmer, let me ask you a question. Yeah. When you uh, are talking to four women of color and you tell them to go back to their country, is that a, a racist statement? Yes or no? It's a simple I, question. I believe it. I, I think it's xenophobic. Yes. Racist. No. So if you th think okay, so different. so going by what you said, and we only have a minute here. If those were four white women, do you think he would have said the same thing? I think he would have attacked them differently. I think he exactly. Oh, there ding, we ding, go. ding 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 ding. Well, you, know, you know you get the ding, truth ding, eventually, ding, Brian. Ding, ding, don't we? We get the truth eventually. <laughs> Wilmer, I appreciate your honesty, my friend, but you just made my yes. point for me. With all <laughs> due respect, uh, if they're four white women and he wouldn't have treated it the same way, then it's got to do with race. If it's got to do with race, then guess what, folks? We call that racist. We're going to take a quick break, and uh, when we come back, this is going to be a lot of fun. We're not really going to be talking about race here. We're right. going to be talking about gender. Yes. Well, Megan Rapino, I met her over the weekend. And we're going to have the WNBA commissioner coming up next. Rapino wants equal pay for women, including WNBA players. The commissioner of the WNBA will be joining the show next. Her name is Kathy Engelbert. She is the perfect person to ask this question. We'll get to WNBA All-Star Weekend and all that applies to why people, I say many of them, do not like Megan Rapino. We'll get to that coming up next. The Vegas Take.